you're running for president in a system that you despise. Citizens United, the big money, you make no make no bones about that. What's the road plot? What's the road map? Give me your give me a road map. How's this gonna work? Well let me tell you this. Uh, the reason I'm running, you see that uh, kids' house over there and all these little toys for the kids. I got seven grandchildren. And I want America to be a country in which they can flourish, in which they can enjoy, in which they can do well. I want America to lead the world in making that happen in other countries. And that's not happening right now. We have a political system right now, especially since Citizens United, which is dominated by a handful of billionaires who can now contribute, in the case of the Koch brothers, more money into the political process than either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Can you imagine that? One family spending more money than either major party. You think Americans get that? Do you think they're concerned about it? I think they're increasingly concerned about it when they see never-ending, ugly, negative ads paid by organizations they know nothing about. Uh, and I think what this is about, frankly, is if we don't turn this around, we're looking not at a democratic form of society. And in Vermont, we're proud that we have one, pa one person, one vote in our town meeting. You're looking at an oligarchic form of society where billionaires control not only the economy, but the political process as well. And mm -hmm. that we cannot allow to happen. Okay. You running for president was never the career plan, was it? <laughs> I, think uh -huh. that's, I think that's an understatement. Was it? I, I mean, so this is somewhat of a internal grassroots uh, feeling of, of, of your own. I mean, this you've kind of evolved into wanting to do this, right? Look, Ed, you're talking to a guy who ran for statewide office in the early 1970s and received 1% of the vote. Okay. And last time I ran for the Senate, I got 71% of the vote. And I am very proud and happy to be Vermont's United States Senator. But I look around what's going on in this country, and I see the enormous problems that people are facing, the disappearing middle class, 45 million people living in poverty, the only country without a national health care program, growing gap between the very rich and everybody else, Citizens United, somebody has got to stand up and say, no, that is not what this country is about. We've got to bring millions of people together, create a movement, and say to the billionaire class, sorry, you can't have it all. Mm -hmm. You're not going to take any PAC money? I'm not going to take, I'm not going to have a super PAC. We have gotten money over the years from unions, from environmental groups, and I welcome that. I will take money from those PACs that agree with my philosophy, but we're not going to have some kind of secret super PAC which is going to be funded by billionaires, that's for sure. Okay, so this is as pure as it gets in <laughs> well, modern-day in modern in modern, politics. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a fair yeah. estimation? I mean, it, I mean it, you've it, never run a negative ad, have you? No, I never ran, I've never run a negative ad in my life. I, we intend to be raising, and we are raising, millions and millions of dollars. For most people, that is a lot of money. But we're running against folks who are going to raise, oh, maybe a billion, maybe $2 billion. Huge sums of money from people that, that are contributing in secret without any disclosure, that is the reality of American politics today. So, yeah. That's so you think there's a roadmap to win in Iowa w with that deck stacked against you? I do. And here's the point. And one of the hesitancies I've had, and you and I have talked about this on your show, you know, I was reluctant to jump into this race. Why? Uh, for a couple of reasons. One of them was, could we raise enough money, enough money, to run a credible and winning campaign. I'm not talking about running, raising a billion dollars, mm -hmm. but enough money to get the message out to people, to organize people. And the answer is, I believe that we can do that. We've been in this race a couple of weeks. We have something like 120,000 individual contributors going to berniesanders.com. You know what the average contribution is? 40 bucks. How's that? 40 bucks. So if millions of people say, yeah, we want fundamental change in our economics and our politics, contribute, we'll have enough money, not to outspend these guys, but to get the message out and do the organization. So you've, you, you've, you've never run a negative campaign. I know, they shocked you. I've never yeah, run well, a negative uh, ad in my uh, life. But I think that, that there's, there's a, a sense of purity there that uh, is rather bold. That's not what the American people are used to seeing. All right, let me tell you a story. You want a story? Yeah, I do. Okay. I love stories. I'm, <laughs> I'm running campaigns where really a lot of ugly stuff was thrown at me, lies, usual stuff. And we would sit around at meetings, and my big tough guys would say, Bernie, you got to respond. you got to beat up these guys. Yeah. And all the women would sit there and say, well, no, you know, I don't think that's what the people of Vermont want. Guess who was right? People, the women of Vermont were right. Uh, you know, my wife was right. People who said, it doesn't work. People want to hear you discuss your ideas for the future. They don't want you to 
be you know, character assassinating other people. And so it, it's not just that I'm you know, a pure human being. It's in my state of Vermont, it doesn't work. And you know what? I think increasingly around the country, people are sick and tired of this crap. So you think that crosses the border to the other 49 states? I really do. I really do. I think people are in trouble. They want to hear what our ideas are to improve this country. And they don't want to, they don't believe that every candidate is an awful, horrible person and needs to be, you know, assassinated with 30 second uh, political ads. What do you do on national security? We're, we're in a heck of a mess right now on what to do with ISIS. What would Bernie Sanders as president do? Okay, I don't think anybody thinks there's any easy or magical answer to it. Number one, obviously, the function of any president is to defend this country as best he or she can. And obviously, I would do that. Um, but this is what I will tell you, Ed. Uh, I voted against the war in Iraq, and I think history will record that as the right vote. What I believe in my heart of hearts is the United States alone cannot win the war against ISIS. We can't do it. The Muslim nations in that world, Saudi Arabia, has the third largest military budget in the world. They're going to have to step up to the plate. This is a fight for the soul of Islam, and the countries there are opposed to the ideology, the, the barbaric ideology of ISIS are gonna have to lead the effort. We have got to play a supportive role. Other countries, Western countries around the world have got to play a supporting role. But the United States alone cannot win that war. And I worry very much that a number of my Republican colleagues want perpetual warfare for whatever reason in the Middle East, and I strongly oppose that. Would you continue the Obama strategy as it is right now as far as drone strikes and and uh, surgical type strikes on, on terrorist groups? I think the president, under very, very difficult circumstances, is trying to do the right thing. And what he is saying is he does not want combat troops uh, in Iraq and Syria, and I agree with him uh, wholeheartedly on that. So I think the idea of special forces, of surgical strikes, uh, is in fact the right thing to do. But once again, we need a coalition to take on ISIS. It cannot just be the United States. So. What about ground troops? That, that rhetoric is out there now. They're trying to uh, outdo one another on Iraq, it seems like, the, the, the other party. I mean, is there ever a scenario where you would commit ground troops uh, into the Middle East? Well, ever is a very big word. But I, as I said, voted against the war in Iraq, and I will do everything I can to prevent that from happening. I mean, you send ground troops in, they get killed, more troops come in, you're into another Vietnam syndrome, you're into perpetual warfare there. Mm -hmm. And you're right. A number of my Republican colleagues are trying to outdo each other, show how tough they are. I heard that rhetoric back in the lead up to the war in Iraq, and that was a disaster. So this is tough stuff. I don't have a magical solution. Frankly, nobody does. Mm -hmm. But it's going to have to be a coalition led by the Muslim nations themselves with our support. All right. Looking at what you have advocated for and what you have fought for. In fact, the gentleman that uh, picked us up at the airport today I asked him about Bernie Sanders. He said, well, he's an unspoiled guy. Is that a, is that a, is that a, I mean, he says that you have fought for the veterans, that you've always cared about the downtrodden. You've always worked to help the poor. You believe in, in the basics when it comes to everybody getting an education. How do you run a presidency like that with, with so much obstruction that has taken place on the very fundamental things that you've advocated for, even veterans, how, how, how hard you've had to work with the vets. Look, uh, I have been criticized for being too boring and too repetitious because the views that I hold today are the views that I held 30 years ago. And people go back and they quote me and it's pretty much the same thing. I believe in a nation in which everybody gets a fair shot in which we don't have massive income and wealth inequality, in which, and I did this as chairman of the Veterans Committee, when people come home wounded in, in body and spirit, we are going to take care of them. That is a major priority, no compromises on that issue. I believe in a country where people work 40 hours a week, they should not live in poverty, which is why we've got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I grew up in a family that did not have a lot of money. I know what economic struggle is about. And yes, if people want to criticizing me, for standing up for the working class and the middle class of this country, and somebody who has for 30 years taken on the wealthiest people in America and virtually every special interest, fine. You want to criticize me for that? I accept that criticism. That's who I am. That's what I do.